Hey guys, it's Chris. It's late and I forgot to do my Amiga 2000 checkup. So, I'm doing it. This is the Vampire Amiga 2000 that has been seen numerous times in many of my videos. And it has a Vampire FPGA 68080, a GVP 4008 SCSI card with a 5 disc Nakamichi whatever MJ5-16 uh, tray loading sucking it in changer audio cable runs to the uh, internal device ENC 28J60 Ethernet card with a very custom stupid one foot cable to a coupler that I run out the back. My HDMI for the RTG is simply a ghetto coupler with a thing and I have a uh, you know regular HDMI cable in here. It has a ribbony uh, this thing the micro SD card with electrical tape on it using a cheap Chineseium 44 pin to IDE. It's like this. This is just the exact card I'm using with exact cable. It has been recapped totally and has been working quite well. But I like to go in here and give it a what's up. This is a FB354 with a GoTek with a faceplate that is in the lid faceplate. Uh, like, a, like a little whatever it's called. Filler. A filler that is in the lid. I painted it so I wanted to do a couple things. I want to 3D print myself a new bracket for the back. One for the Ethernet, one for the micro SD, and one for the HDMI. It's like it's like Sarah Jessica Parker ugly. And as you can see here, I have my micro SD card, which is currently Coffin R54. It's running on a Lexar X1000, 32 giger, no big deal. This one has its original left, right audio and video. I did pull out the CPU slot cover to put this wonderful coupler in here with just extreme force. And it works. I can plug in Ethernet and everything works fine off of the Vampire. One thing I have noticed with this, from using this computer for the past 30-ish years, I bought this brand new, 1991, Mola, the Berg power connectors off of the power supply are flaky as all get out. I actually ran myself new, an additional Berg that I wired into the power supply, which is supposed to be for the GoTech, except me and all of my brain power made it for the compact flash card over here when I had something in here at the time. So I didn't make it long enough. The problem with that is these are flaky, and if it's pushed in a certain way, the pins are just like they're probably wore out beyond recognition. So I'm going to do the right thing and shove it underneath of the floppy drive cable and then shove it into the GoTek. If I don't touch it, it's normally good. Now it's probably going to work. So once I plug this back in and turn this on, I should get my GoTek screen. Flash floppy version 3.1.6. Whew! I got to do an update. So this card has the microwave flicker fixer inner, and what we're going to do is plug a adapter, which is a HD15 to a RGB, and this is going to do some cable flipping science. That'll plug into the back of the microwave flicker fixer. Just going to turn it on. I leave one CD in because it tends to boot faster. It's weird. Hard drive is doing its thing. It will hole for a SCSI bus right here down low. I have a light with the hot glue in and you'll see we're already booted. So that sucker loads extremely fast. And you're like, Chris, you have HDMI. Why don't you use it? I'm rocking an old 17-inch monitor over there that's just VGA and it doesn't do HDMI at all. But I want to show you that it can do it. And there I'm in a high-colored workbench coffin R50 and it's totally functional and it looks incredibly beautiful. I can move all this down and maybe and not. If I was to reboot it, it would be there. But I didn't hit save, I hit use. 
Uh, this is a great display. It has 811K of chip RAM left, 125 megs of fast, everything works fine. I don't use this all the time, but I can and it works extremely well. This is a upgrade flash floppy. This is part of my maintenance. We're gonna put our drive in and when we turn our Amiga on, you're gonna press and hold both buttons. So I'm pressing hold them now. And it's gonna say flash, floppy, update flash, let go. It's gonna clear, it's gonna program, and now it's on 329. Cool, huh? And there you go. Do 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 But look how smooth that is. This accelerator is one of the greatest ones made. You can talk what you want about Pi Storm. That is new. This was before I've had this for three years, and this works totally fine. I pulled out the cables, that's that's the Amiga 2000's power supply cables. In the main board, two Bergs, the extra Berg I added, and two uh, Molexes. There's your cables. Four around the edge. So with that, this concoction can come up. This entire contraption can now come out. Oh, look at that. There is a Vampire V2 that I just pushed down. While I'm in here, I'm going to replace this with the... Um, with the screw-in kind, now this is Ethernet, but with the screw-in kind, uh, yeah, no I won't, because this is only one foot. Anyway, here's my Super Denise 8373 R4PD, that's your ECS brand, power supply on the bench. I tuned this bad boy up a few years ago, why is this always tangled? So, to get this out, it's six screws around the outside perimeter. Alright, this will just fold off the top. You will see inside my massive capacitors. Ha hee hee! There's my brand new one. There's my brand new one. There's my brand new one. Brand new one. Brand new one. Here's our fan. Pull this connector off of the board down here. Now, grab the connector itself. There's your fan plug. This can now be unscrewed. So these screws are not your typical cut your plastic to shreds. They have the clips that go over the outside. There's my fan shroud. Here's the fan. Here's those clips I was talking about. They literally just snap into the fan itself. And they're going to be returning on the Noctua fan. Still works, but it's just noisy. Like noisy. DC brushless. That's good. Probably has a bearing in here that's loose. Wore out. This is from Seho Electronic Components, Japan. They don't even, do they even make stuff in Japan anymore? Okay, so here's the Noctua NF-A8 Premium fan, blah, blah, blah. Got all these headers and flow acceleration channels and anti-vibration pads and all this magic. Oh, the box is heavier than the fan and you can get an instruction manual. You know how I'm doing this? I'm just plugging it in. Right. Here's the fan screws I'm talking about. These little rubber mountain peg thing. I mean, would they work? Maybe, but that would look fugly. So we'll keep those for some other fan and it can rubber mount it. So the original one was sitting like this with the shielding. So this is going to sit the same way. This was sitting this way. So this one's going to sit the same way. It's got the rubber dudes. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work because I have to put this over top of it. So these are coming off and these are going on. Okay, so in my hand I took the finger poker and I poked my fingers with this to depress these things to pull them out. Because I want to match this one. And that is that. I'm going to leave this one hanging out so it touches metal. And I'm going to plug this into the board, and then I'm going to turn the power supply on. Okay, so here's this fan. Hear how loud it is? This is the difference. Much quieter. Putting out some way better air. So this is what I did for the 2000. I just uh, took the yellow out. I'm just going to go like that, and then roll my fingers this way. So, this is going to plug Back in board again. Get my four screws and my fan shield here. 
Okay, so I don't have little vibration shock absorbers on. None of that crap. Let's see how it sounds in the case without the lid on. Much quieter. Wow, that's moving some air. Yep, that looks good. And I'm also going to test it again on the bench here with the lid on. And of course, I'm going to wipe this down because you can see I touched something over here and it's starting to etch right there. Lid on. Much quieter. That's how it's going to sound in the case. Man, really pulling. Why do I do this? I don't know. Now I'm going to hook up all the 276 cables that go to this thing. So letting it put the lid on. You know how it works. If you freaking take your Amiga apart and touch it, all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Dang it, Vampire boots fast. That thing boots fast. Incredible. It's done. Yeah, I know. We did this the other day. Or earlier in the video. That was actually the other day. This is another day. So with that done, knock to a fan is knock to one. I'm going to put my cover back on for the 700th time. So this fan sounded like this. Can I still hear it? Yeah. Is this loud? Not at all. Can you make them whisper quiet? There's a resistor in one of these packs. It's called quiet mode. It's got a resistor in here. Low noise adapter. I think it just slows it down. I don't care. It's cooling. It's, it's nice. It works great. This thing already booted. It's crazy. Crazy fast. So that is the Noctua NF-A8 80mm premium, premium fan for your Amiga project. Didn't use the shock absorber rubber things. Probably never will. I don't think it's that much of a vibration issue. I just wanted a new fan to replace the old original. That is all I got. That concludes my Amiga 2000 tune-up. And stay tuned for the other guys coming soon, if not already. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you. And as always, hope you learned something.